You might have noticed that in actual use, batteries sometimes get warm. And there's a reason for this. Now, we've spoken about batteries as just being ideal EMFs, but in fact, we can model a real battery this way, as having an internal EMF that's produced by the chemical reactions in the battery. But there's also resistance. When current goes through a battery, there's a potential difference across that internal resistance. So here is our model of a real battery. And because of this internal resistance, I have a potential drop across this resistance. The terminal voltage of the battery is less than the ideal EMF of the battery. And it's also true that you dissipate energy in this internal resistance. So you end up with a smaller terminal voltage and you end up with a warmer battery. And that's what this question is asking about. And we envision this battery, as sketched right here, hooked up in a circuit to a 2 ohm resistor. So it looks like this. I have my 1.5 volt EMF with a 1 ohm internal resistance hooked up to a 2 ohm resistor in a circuit. Okay? Now here's the thing. This circuit as a whole has a voltage of 1.5 volts. It's got an effective resistance of the series combination of these two. The circuit as a whole just looks like this. It's a 1.5 volts connected to 3 ohms total resistance. And so we can model the circuit this way. And we model it this way, we can calculate the current. The current is just equal to delta V divided by the effective resistance of the circuit. Well, that's just 1.5 volts divided by my 3 ohms series combination of these two resistors. And so we end up with a current of 0 0.50 amps. And now we're ready to solve. And there's two pieces to the puzzle. First off, the potential difference between the terminals of the battery and then the fraction of the power that's dissipated. Well, let's look at the potential difference first. I'm going to redraw the circuit this way. First off, I'm going to draw the battery, which looks like this. And then we connect the battery to another resistor, which looks like this. Now, this fraction of the circuit is the battery. So if I'm looking at the terminal voltage, what I'm asking is this. What's the potential difference between this point and this point? Now, in this circuit as a whole, we know that there's a current of 0 0.5 amps. So since there's a current of 0 0.5 amps, there will be a potential difference across this 1 ohm resistor. And we can calculate what the potential difference is. The potential difference is just equal to the current times the resistance. Well, the current is 0 0.50 amps. The resistance is 1.0 ohms. That's the internal resistance of the battery. And so we end up with a potential difference across this internal resistance of 0 0.5 volts. So that tells me this. We always call the potential at this point in the circuit 0 volts. We always do that. The potential right here is on the other side of that 1.5 volt EMF, so it's 1.5 volts. But then there's a potential difference across this resistor of 0.5 volts. And so the potential right here is going to be 1.0 volts. So the potential difference between the two terminals of the battery is 1.0 volts. And so therefore the battery's terminal voltage is 1.0 volts. That's the battery's terminal voltage. That's where asked in part A. Now, we can do kind of like uh, an assessment as we work here. We've said the terminal voltage of the battery is 1 volt. That means there's a 1 volt potential difference across this 2 ohm resistor. If I have a 1 volt potential difference across a 2 ohm resistor, the current that I expect, delta V divided by R, is 1.0 volts divided by 2.0 ohms, 0 0.5 amps. And that is, in fact, exactly what we see. That's, in fact, exactly what we see. And so this is a good check on our work. At an intermediate stage of the calculation, we've shown that the calculation of the current matches what we already calculated for the current. So this is a good check that we're headed in the right direction. Now, for part B, we want to consider the power which is dissipated. Now, power, in general, is equal to I squared times 
R in a resistor, okay? And we have power in two different places. First off, let's consider the internal power in the battery. Well, that's just equal to I squared times R. The current is 0 0.5 amps. The resistance is 1.0 ohms. And so the power dissipated inside the battery is 0 0.25 watts. How much power is dissipated in the 2 ohm resistor? Well, that again is I squared times R. The current is 0 0.50 amps. The resistance is 2.0 ohms. And so we end up with a power of 0 0.50 watts. The total power in the circuit is the sum of those two. 0.25 plus 0.5, the total power is 0 0.75 watts. The power dissipated internally in the internal resistance of the battery is 0.25 watts. So the fraction, 0 0.25 watts dissipated in the battery, divided by 0 0.75 watts total power, tells me one-third of the power is dissipated in the battery's internal resistance. And that makes sense, because the internal resistance of the battery is one-half of the external resistance of two ohms. And so we expect half as much power dissipated internally as is given to the circuit, and so one-third of the overall power is going to be dissipated in the battery. This makes sense. Our work checks, matches our expectations of how the world works.